Wow! Hey, welcome to the shop. In this video, I'll show you how to make corroded aluminum parts shine like chrome. This doesn't need to be expensive. It just takes some time and effort. And hey, those are about the only things that don't cost more nowadays. This isn't my first rodeo. I've been thrown off a horse before. Some of my other videos are about restoring motorcycles and those projects usually involve reviving aluminum parts. Pieces like engine covers and fork tubes really stand out, so restoring them can make an old bike look years younger. In response to those videos, I've been flooded with comments asking how I do this. So here it is, by popular demand. I'll put a list of the steps, tools, and materials I use, and some tips I've learned from doing this later in this video. So here's what you'll need. A household cleaner and a scouring pad or a scrub brush with stiff bristles. Some parts might also need a degreaser. And you might need paint stripper. You'll definitely need sandpaper. I use several stages of grits from 220 to 1000. The silicon carbide paper lasts better than the cheaper stuff. It can be used wet, but that makes more mess and dry works fine for me. Ideally you'd have a purpose-built high-speed buffer, but an old bench grinder or a drill will also work. You'll need buffing wheels and a couple of different buffing compounds. You'll want a quality metal polish and a clean, soft rag. And you'll want patience, because this takes time. The piece I'll do here took over an hour. And most importantly, you'll need a good breakfast, because this also takes a bit of effort. The stuff you need to buy is pretty cheap and worth the cost, even for one bike project. But if you plan to do a lot of projects and you want to go all out to make the work much easier, you can invest in media or vapor blasting, either having your parts blasted or buying the equipment to do it yourself. Later on, I'll show you a time lapse of my son reviving a fork tube from our 2010 Yamaha V Star 650 Classic project using the steps I'll explain here. For now, and just to walk you through what I do, I'll use the right foot rest from that V Star. I'll show you some clips and photos from other projects as I go. If the part has any non aluminum bits that you can remove, like the steel mole on this foot rest, you should do that first. The next job is to clean it. That includes degreasing, if needed, and then a wash. I wash most parts in a sink with hot water and a household cleaner using a scouring pad or a stiff brush. If you live alone, or you wish to, you can run small parts through a dishwasher. Please don't tell my wife that I know that. This footrest didn't have paint or clear coat, but if your part does, stripping it is your next step. To get that off, I use this aluminum safe stripper. After you get to the bare aluminum, it's on to sanding. This is a good time to grab your second breakfast. I start with 220 grit paper, but you could go with something more coarse, maybe 120, if it really had deep scratches. The first stage of sanding will use the most time for this work. That's where you have to remove all the corrosion and scratches, at least as much as possible. Each step after the first is really just to remove the scratches from the prior step, making those scratches finer and more shallow and less visible. To make this first step easier, I often use this Black & Decker mouse detailed sander, but you don't need one to do this work. I'll be showing you photos of this footrest that I took using a light box and a DSLR camera that catches tiny defects in the finished piece, which are often hardly visible to the naked eye. And here's the footrest before and after I finished 220 sanding with the detail sander. 
My photos don't really do the final product justice with white or black walls in the light box. Next I'll do another course of 220 grit by hand just to get any spots I couldn't reach with the detail sander. All of my sanding after the first stage is by hand. When you sand a piece by hand, you begin to notice it's every little feature. If you spend this much time caressing every square inch of a part, you'll see it differently. For me, I start to appreciate the part's smaller details, and that gives me a sense of connection with the work of the part's designers, maybe decades ago, and maybe on the other side of the world. And here's how it looked after hand sanding with 220 paper. After 220 grit, I move on to 400. And here's the piece before and after 400. And then I use 600 grit. Steps and grits of roughly 200 seem to work well. And here's the piece before and after 600 grit. Then I step up to 800 grit. I'd often stop sanding after this stage, or sometimes even after 400, if the piece will be painted with a solid color. If the surface is too smooth, paint just won't adhere well. And here's how it looked after sanding with 800 grit. And I finished sanding with 1000 grit. I've gone up to 1200 and 1500, but I don't think it makes much difference in the end. And here it is, before and after, 1000 grit. So, you can see the sanding made a huge difference from where we started. But the biggest improvement will come with buffing. This is the only part of my process that really needs a power tool. Ideally a purpose-built buffer. I had an old bench grinder that still worked fine, and after taking off a guard, it made a decent buffer. You can buy buffing kits for use with a drill, but the high speed of a buffer or a grinder does a better, faster job. I use two types of buffing wheels, a sizal wheel for heavy work, and then a loose cotton wheel for the fine work. These are available for about $10 to $20 each, and mine are still in decent shape after dozens of projects. A full kit of buffing compounds, which you can use on more than just aluminum, costs less than $30. I did the first pass on this footrest using brown Tripoli compound on a sizal wheel. For heavier work, I've used a black emery compound on a sizal wheel, but I find the brown works fine after sanding.
here's how it looked before and after the sizal wheel. Then I finished buffing with white polishing compound on the cotton wheel. Buffing is very satisfying work. You can see the shine coming back, and it really makes all the sanding worthwhile. Here's how it looked after buffing with the cotton wheel. After the buffing, it's just a matter of polishing the piece with a good quality metal polish. I use Autosol, but there are several other good ones. And here's the finished piece. I mentioned this takes some time, and here's how long it took for each step of this footrest. I could add a clear coat at this point, which should make the surface more resistant to scratching. I don't bother, because the shine will last if the part is kept clean, and even if not, it's easy to bring it back with a bit of polishing like my last step above. If a part needs to be painted, here's what I do when it has a logo or writing in relief. I paint the entire piece, maybe after masking some areas, then just sand off the places that are meant to be bare. This is much easier than masking the relief areas and it leaves clean sharp edges where the paint meets bare aluminum. To recap, here are all the steps. And here's a list of supplies. These are the products and suppliers I use. I'm not at this time affiliated with any of these. I just find the products work well for me. If any of them want to open their wallets in the future, I'll add their links to the description. Nobody rides for free. And here are a few things I've learned after restoring more aluminum parts than I can remember. This is really satisfying work. It feels good to bring back that luster. This isn't expensive, but it takes some time and effort. It's worth the effort because in my opinion, the finished parts look great, and my opinion matters, in my opinion. Sanding makes dust and buffing makes a mess, so wear a mask and choose your work area accordingly. That rules out your kitchen, unless you live alone. That mirror finish is fragile on aluminum and it scratches easily. A clear coat would help with that. If the part isn't going right onto the bike, find a safe place to store it in the meantime. I don't recommend using steel wool or a wire wheel as a shortcut for sanding. I tried a wire wheel on one of my V65 Sabre fork tubes, but not the other. The one that was wire wheeled just didn't shine as well. Some aluminum parts didn't shine like chrome when the bike was new, so it won't be perfectly original, but it looks good anyway. I made a video covering some other skills that you'll want to have in your 
restoration and repertoire. Check it out after you watch this time lapse of my son bringing an oxidized V-Star 650 fork tube back to its full glory. Thanks for watching.